and good morning. We're live in the Weather Channel Forecast Center. It's August 24th, 1992, a day that undoubtedly will go down in history as a very strong, dangerous Hurricane Andrew makes its way towards southern Dade County in Miami, Florida. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this uh, hurricane looks like. Some of the latest radar imagery showing perhaps the outer eye wall just starting to come into some of the outer banks here. So these could cause some uh, real big problems as it moves its way on toward the west. Obviously some pretty good rain here, Miami through Biscayne Bay and across a good part of South Dade County as this continues to move off uh, to the west at about 20 miles an hour and is easily less than an hour, an hour and a half away. So folks, again, uh, we haven't heard a lot of damage reported yet, but I'm sure things are going to go downhill very, very rapidly when we're talking about this area right in here is packing winds of at least 140 miles an hour plus it's moving on off toward the west at about 20 miles an hour. Dennis Smith is down in Miami, Florida, and Dennis is going to give us the latest on what he is experiencing. This is Dennis. Dennis, you're with us. Well, the very latest uh, from Coral Gables is we continue to get worse in, uh, on the uh, weather situation. We're continuing to pile the winds a little bit stronger. And in fact, the winds are probably, we think went over the last uh, five to 10 minutes, probably gusting up to about 80 to 90 miles an hour. We continue to get some wind whipped rain and uh, we've had power outage in this immediate area for about the last 20 minutes and we can still see uh, pops of blue on the horizon, meaning that there's still some more uh, transformers popping or power lines snapping. Uh, there is some downed trees, even around the area that where we're staying right now. We've heard glass being blown out, as well as some of the uh, roofing, uh, the metal uh, part of the roofing being peeled off. So conditions continue to worsen as the storm continues to move on in, as expected, uh, with landfall uh, expected probably within the next hour at about 5, uh, five o'clock a.m. It looks like uh, we'll continue to see the winds climb on up. But our current conditions at Coral Gables is one of about 80 to 90 miles an hour oh, wow. and uh, an, an occasional gust and the rain and squalls can continue to come on down. Jim? All right, thank you, Dennis. John Hope, you're looking at Dennis there live. Uh, what do you think he's experiencing? Well, as you can see, the uh, weather deteriorated very, very quickly there. He's getting gusts up to 80 or 90 miles an hour and that's, you know, it wasn't very easy to stand up and it's almost impossible to stand up in that kind of wind. Also, you get that rain in bursts. It seems to come horizontally. You can't see very far and the noise uh, picks up and it's, right. uh, and the eye wall is not really quite there yet and when he gets the eye wall there it'll be much worse than he sees at this moment. What kind of time are we talking about? It's four o'clock in the evening? Uh, now. Well within about an hour or so at the most maybe a little bit less than that. It's uh, moving a little bit faster so it's going to be in there very very shortly. John what do you think the folks are going to find when they get back to their homes this afternoon to assess some of the damage? Well, in the area where the hurricane was the worst, of course, uh, people who live on the open beach and uh, on some of the keys offshore, Key Biscayne and so on, are going to find, I think, a lot of tidal flooding there. We expect the uh, storm surge in Biscayne Bay itself to be up to 13 feet, so it'll be that kind of tidal flooding. There'll be a lot of trees down, there'll be some structural damage, certainly to, to houses, to structures, to windows that aren't boarded up, and uh, and so on. There'll be a lot of debris in the streets, almost impossible to move around, uh, I'm sure, until the streets are cleared off. It takes a while to do that. Okay, thank you very much, John. And folks, a reminder, you know, don't go back uh, to your homes to assess some of the damage if you're watching us down in South Florida until the authorities tell you to do so. There could still be some power lines that are live and things like that, and we don't want you to uh, suffer any worse damage than you need to. All the hotel rooms along Interstate 75 and 95 are filled up all the way up into southern Georgia, so hopefully the people took a heed of the warnings with Hurricane Andrew and made their way out safely. So uh, we'll find out how things are going as we get the assessments from South Florida. Folks, stay with us. We'll continue to update Hand Andrew live as it makes landfall within the next hour or two. Stay with us. Okay, Jim, now let's take a look at the Good Morning Forecast. And just first, we'd like to remind you and say thanks to the Miami Hurricane Center. Visions. A lot of power is going out here in Boca Raton. It's almost a miracle that the, the power is still on. That's what one official just told me. He's, he's deadly shocked about that. But the power is still on here, on here in Boca Raton, but other parts of South Florida have lost their power. Lots of local stations here in South Florida have become mini CNNs, mini local CNNs. 
They're going live 24 hours. They just keep bringing news about the hurricane to tell people what's going on. All throughout this area, people are going into shelters. That is the safest place to be, especially if you live near the beach. There are still people. Right next to us is a condominium. It has 12 floors and about 10 apartments each floor. So I, with a little mathematics there, I estimate there are about 120 apartments. 14 apartments are still occupied. That's what authorities are telling us. They refuse to leave for various reasons. At this point, they don't have a choice. They're not being allowed to leave. Police have closed off the bridges that separate the beach from the mainland. And here in South Florida, the bridges that go over the intracoastal are not the greatest spans to begin with. They're usually narrow and they're not particularly strong. And since South Florida hasn't had a direct hit from a hurricane in so many years, people are very concerned how those bridges are gonna hold out. So people are here for the duration. And this is just the beginning because within an hour, the strongest winds from Hurricane Andrew are expected to arrive here in South Florida. And one very kind of funny thing that strikes me, behind me is a swimming pool, and there's a sign next to the swimming pool that says, please shower before entering pool. Struck me as kind of funny on a night like this. This is Gary Tuckman, CNN Live in Boca Raton, Florida. Gary, we know why you are on that beach, but are there other people there with you? Dave, you'll have to excuse me. The winds have gusted to such a point where you, Dave Michaels, sound like a gust of wind to me and not a human voice. I really can't hear what you're saying, unfortunately. All right, Gary Tuckman, we are happy to have you uh, still up uh, and visible. Uh, we have lost, apparently, our picture out of Miami, and we will be contacting them by phone. Brian. Yes, uh, that's right. Earlier we saw live reports from John Zarella and his colleagues in Miami, but the severity of the storm is such that we have asked them to go indoors because we don't want them to get hurt. Let's uh, go now to John, who joins us now by phone in Miami. John? Indeed, we are all in the Bureau. It is uh, safe in here. The uh, winds got to the point that those palm trees behind us, the, the major concern was that uh, one of those palm trees would collapse, perhaps hit the satellite truck, knock the, uh, the antenna down, and at that point we would not be able to get back to you with live pictures. We are going to effort every possible conceivable way to come up and uh, give you a live picture during the eye of the storm as it passes over here if it passes directly over us or anywhere near us we may only be able to come up on the air for five ten minutes uh, depending on where we are in the eye of the storm it looks as if it'll probably pass about uh, ten miles to the south of us maybe five miles ten miles to the south of us anybody's guess i suppose at this point uh, but the winds are really howling out there uh, everyone is in the uh, CNN Miami Bureau. Everyone is safe, uh, trying to dry out at this particular point, and uh, just uh, getting ready to uh, break for the streets for just a few precious moments of that, that calm. Now, we're going to do that because that's what we're here for, to try and bring you those pictures. But many people, anybody who may be listening, who still has cable on down here, who's still on with power, which is probably very few people, should know that when that eye of the storm comes over, do not go outside. It is not over. You've still got the whole backside of the hurricane. And when those winds come up, they don't come up slow and then build. They come up very strong, very quickly, and at least as severe, and some people say worse, than the front side of the hurricane. Brian? John, it's amazing to all of us here at CNN in Atlanta that you still have electricity on there. Uh, is there a point where the city actually turns it off for, for safety reasons? Uh, we're, we have generator power here in our building. And that's why we're able to talk to you. That's why uh, we were able to bring you those pictures from the satellite truck a uh, half hour ago or so, simply because we have generator power that we're operating off of here at the Bureau. I've got a cellular phone sitting next to me. Yeah, just a few moments ago, everything went dark in the Bureau and then came back on again. Perhaps one of the, uh, the generators tripped for a second. If we should lose the generators and lose everything here, at least I'll have a cellular phone to keep in touch uh, with you folks there in Atlanta, Brian. Okay, John Zarella and his colleagues standing by live. We'll continue to give us updates throughout the night. We are staying with this storm. You are going to hear it right here on CNN. This is the place to be for all the information you need. Let's go now to Dave. Thank you, Brian. CNN meteorologist Valerie Voss joins us now, and she has the latest picture of what exactly Andrew looks like. Val. 
Well, Dave, we have been watching Andrew move purposefully toward the Florida coast over the last 12 to 24 hours. And as you can see, it is drawing very near. Winds are still at 140 miles an hour, which is approximately, oh, 120 knots. The center of the system now less than 20 miles, or for our international viewers, about 36 kilometers off the Florida coast. Best guess at this point, this eye, which is now reported to be about 20 nautical miles wide, will move on shore right in the Fort Lauderdale to Cutler Ridge area, which is right in the Biscayne Bay region. And of course, it is going to bring a huge storm surge, torrential downpours. Rainfall amounts will be very high. There are, of course, hurricane warnings in effect all the way from the Florida East Coast, Vero Beach, down to the Dry Tortugas. Possible rainfall could be easily six inches. We're saying now between six and ten inches across the southern half of Florida. Lesser amounts as you go farther northward. There are tropical storm warnings. Hurricane watches in effect further to the north. The storm surge will occur not only on the east coast as the system moves on shore with those northerly winds on the, or um, easter, easterly winds on the north side but as it moves across florida on the bottom side the south side of the storm we will have westerly winds so the storm surge both coasts either side anywhere from the 6 to 12 foot range